there are winners and losers in recruiting. You would have to say Kentucky would be a loser in the Chaz Lanier uh, race. I know BYU got in there, but really, I thought that was a two-horse race the whole time. Your thoughts on Chaz Lanier picking the balls over the Commonwealth? Is this just a young man who grew up in Tennessee? He went to Innsworth, in the mid-state area. Uh, if, if, if you followed Kentucky's recruiting of different players, it, it, it almost seemed like Chaz Lanier would be the crown jewel of Tennessee's class, whereas on the flip side, maybe it was just another good player for Kentucky. If you're Kentucky in the Commonwealth and you got Mark Pope as your new head basketball coach, are you concerned that you lost Chaz Lanier to your rival, Tennessee? Yes, but not just about the rival thing. I'm concerned for a few reasons. One, you just bring up the point. Kentucky opened much more of an NIL checkbook for Chaz Lanier to land there, which is a scary thought. I think that it's really not debatable to me. I think right now Tennessee is a much more desirable place than Kentucky. And I think if you're Kentucky, not only are you concerned that Chaz Lanier spurned Mark Pope, after getting offered reportedly more money to go to Kentucky than Tennessee, you were also concerned, and this is a big underrated thing, Dave, with recruiting. And you know this, you cover the sport, and you, or you cover recruiting, and based on what you told me about Chaz Lanier, if you knew that, and insiders knew it, Tennessee always knew it, right? They always knew Chaz Lanier was coming to Tennessee. He was just leveraging more. If you're Kentucky, are you not concerned that Mark Pope wasn't able to see that and allow Chaz Lanier to play him and waste his time? I am from the person that I talked to, my Kentucky source, they had multiple options. So I'm not just going to get on here because we're, we're viewed as a, a just a Tennessee channel. But I, it would be easy for me to say, Kentucky, you're a basketball player program's horrible because of Pope. And I don't know that that's the case. And I know he had more options. Now let's see how the class falls into place. If he picks up two more four star guys, then you're fine. But I, I think he, I'm actually going to give him credit. I think he, he had options and has options. Now, if nobody falls here soon, uh, that, that fits what they needed in Chas Lanier, then maybe you have a little bit of a concern. But I'm actually going to to say that based off really digging in over the past couple of weeks with the Chaz Lanier situation, I'm actually a little encouraged by Pope um, and, and his options that he has in recruiting. Now, if he strikes out on all of them, I get to go back and take all of that down off YouTube, correct? Yes. Well, this is all going to come down to, uh, I believe today's the NBA draft withdrawal decision. Um, and so Jackson Robinson, I'm not going to say anything about it because if I say it, it would be outdated very quickly, but the first round of NBA draft withdrawals did not include Jackson Robinson. And that was the other backup option if they didn't get Chaz Lanier. So, but if he is staying in the NCAA, in the NBA draft, then you can start to get very concerned about Mark Pope. But again, that's, Let's throw that out because we don't know if he is or if he isn't. And as of now, we can't make that call. I can I can just say that he did not withdraw. He was not part of the initial withdrawal from the NBA draft. Jackson Robinson was not. That is who Kentucky needs to go after the most heavily. However, if Mark Pope doesn't land him, then yes, I think there's a lot to be concerned about at that point. And I guess where I'm at with it is, and I said this about Kentucky for a while, People can disagree with me all the uh, and cry uh, all day about me saying this, but Kentucky did not recruit those players John Calipari brought in the last 15 years. John Calipari brought in those players. If you sent John Calipari to Iowa State, Dave, he's getting the same recruiting classes he got the last 15 years. He's getting the exact same dudes, and their jerseys will look a lot cooler. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's not like an Oregon football thing. But it's close sometimes. I don't know if you glance at their jerseys, but it seems like Nike's trying out st this stuff for them. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that they're overly hurt, um, except for the fact that it was Tennessee. I think you, if you're Kentucky, you'd rather lose somebody to Florida or somebody else because they had a family tie there. You just don't like losing the guys to Tennessee for the most part. I think we, we could definitely agree there, right? Well, would they – 
would they rather lose it to Tennessee or to Louisville? Could they at least respect losing to Louisville because Louisville is like, okay, you could say kind of an actual peer in, in basketball and they don't really want to see Tennessee as a peer at all. They want to see Tennessee like at a significant level beneath them in basketball. Uh, quite possibly. Uh, Rick, Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. Man, Rick Terry Jewelry Designs is fantastic. They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals, a Tennessee tradition? RickTerryJewelry.com. That's RickTerryJewelry.com. We love Rick and what he's able to do, and we've got a brand new promotion that's coming out where you can win some fantastic Fire Opals for your loved one and uh, certainly that uh, she's going to appreciate that. I don't think there's any question about it. Now, uh, if you're Tennessee and you got a couple of spots remaining, is there reason to wait in, in terms of seeing if anybody else comes available or do you want to fill those spots? Uh, I have heard, uh, uh, it's been told to me that Rick Barnes doesn't feel like he has to fill up all those spots, which would have looked bad. Um, and we're going to talk more about that. But if you don't get Chaz Lanier, do you have to fill up those two spots? Um, if they didn't get Chaz Lanier, they would have had to fill up. They would have had three spots. They would have had to fill one of them if they want to have to. If they wanted to be better than last year, Chaz Lanier automatically makes Tennessee better than last year. Um, I'll say this for Kentucky: they've done well enough in the transfer portal to this point, where between that and Mark Pope's coaching which is a little bit different that they might actually, I don't know if they'll be better in the regular season than they were the last few years under Calipari, but I think they are better positioned to actually make a deeper tournament run next year, which by the way, that's not hard to do because a deeper tournament run means winning an NCAA tournament game, given yes. what Calipari was doing the last few years at Kentucky. Well, I, when I talk to Kentucky fans, they really like this guy, but everybody Tennessee fans like Butch Jones at, at one point. So you you always like the new coach. But you know, when I look at the coaches that had success there, it's funny to me because I'm not going to pretend to tell you I know a lot about Adolph Rupp, but he doesn't seem like a slick type of guy. Um, Rick Patino seems like a slick type of guy. Um Obviously, John Calipari seems like a slick type of guy. It almost feels like at times that Kentucky wants to be somebody they're not. That they've had their best success when they've had the slick ones. Um, but it just... Uh, Tubby Smith, I know, won a championship. But Caleb, did you think he outcoached anyone during this time? Well, I actually thought Tubby Smith was a great defensive coach. And that is what helped him win a championship. Tubby Smith kind of was very simplistic with the offense, but he had a very aggressive man-to-man -man style defense that fit the team. I thought Tubby Smith did well, but I, I get what you're saying. Like Rick Pitino, that following Rick Pitino, who was all offense and all three-point shooting, that was so much more fun to watch um, during that time. You're right. Adolph Rupp. Um, after Rupp, there was Joby Hall, who just looks like the nerdiest guy to ever coach a basketball game. I got to be honest with you. Joby Hall did. <laughs> he does. Um, well, let me ask um, you this about can uh, let's let's put our uh, ourselves in the place of a Kentucky fan, and and I want this on the message board too. It's not going to be a poll questions, but it what the H. What the? What was he thinking? Release the hounds. The Dave Hooker Show. K -k 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 keep cool. A presentation of OffTheHookSports.com. If I would have said this a year ago. You would have said I was crazy, but I'm going to say it now. Kentucky is better off going into this basketball season with Mark Pope and John Calipari as their head basketball coach. Boom. They're better off this year. Are they better off long term? Are they better off long term? Yes. They had, I mean, they had Calipari long term, and I'm now I've spoken to enough Kentucky fans that I hear him, and he bright he just kept bragging about the billions he was making in the NBA, and they'd have the all billion team, and and it was just like, ugh, I don't. Okay, you tell me though, Dave. Let's go back. I feel like Kentucky I want you fans to get on. What I want you to get on here every day and say, I hate that we didn't win that uh that Marconi award. 
But uh, boy, this thing's going to make me rich. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, no, okay, I get they're they're happy about losing Calipari. But Dave, I know this with Kentucky fans. Kentucky basketball fans are like Washington Commanders football fans, and I want to be clear about this with Washington Commanders football fans. Have you ever? I don't know if you guys have ever been up here, but if you are up to the DMV, excuse me, but if you ever see a quarterback succeed for like a second in Washington, they all of a sudden think that's the greatest quarterback of all time. And it goes to their head. I think Kentucky basketball fans, they force themselves to fall in love early with their coach. I bet you they thought Billy Gillespie was going to be the greatest coach in history. You bet I thought that? I bet you Kentucky fans thought that. Oh. Now, uh, Tennessee fans fell in love with Butch Jones because they were desperate for some sort of non-CEO in football, and he ended up being terrible. But I remember the Derek Dooley hire, Dave, and half of Tennessee fans were never, ever going to get on board with the Derek Dooley hire. I have to be honest. Um, I, when Billy Gillespie was hired, I didn't have a strong feel either way other than I didn't want to ride in a car with him. 